I have VirtualBox 6 installed on my computer, and now I'm going to upgrade to VirtualBox 7. Make sure that if you are taking a class or in the middle of something, that you don't do this upgrade at this time. Wait until the end of class, because I have seen upgrades happen, or after the upgrade goes, you end up having a problem with uh, getting your virtual machines to start again. So that's just my recommendation as a college professor. Now, I'm in the VirtualBox setup. And I downloaded this from virtualbox.org. I'm going to choose to install all the options, which is the default. Click Next. And now it's giving me a warning about resetting my interfaces. And I don't, I'm not running any particular virtual machines right now, so I'll go ahead and choose Yes. Also, there's this new requirement for Python Core to be installed, so I'll choose Yes on that and click Install. And installation shouldn't take more than a few minutes. I'm doing this on a Windows 10 computer, but my understanding is this also works on Windows 11 as of version 7, although I have not tested that out yet. I saw the Windows 6 icon disappear and the Windows 7 one then just reappeared. And I'm going to click Finish, and it should go ahead and start VirtualBox 7. And there it is. If after the upgrade you don't see your virtual machines in the list, it is possible to get to them. You can choose the import option, locate the file where they originally were, and then go ahead and add them in, and they should start up. They don't always, but most of the time they do. Let's take a look at how we can create a new virtual machine in VirtualBox version 7. I'll click on the New button, and I'll give this one a name. I'll call this one Windows Server. And I'm going to choose an ISO image. It's going to browse to it. So here we see that I'm going to put in Windows Server 2022. Here's the path to the ISO file and the addition of the operating system. I'm going to click Next. And what it's going to try to do by default is an unattended installation. That means it's going to try to get all the information on the front end, and then you can uh, go ahead and just walk away, and it'll complete the installation for you. The default is going to be the VBox user, and the password is going to be change me, so you may want to change that. And then it's got the host name that it's going to put in, along with the domain name. I'm going to go back and choose the skip the un unattended installation and just do the attended installation instead. And here we have the base memory of two gigabytes. That's, that's too low. I'm going to say, let's go with, uh, let's do 6,000, which is approximately six gigabytes. And then the processors, I do have several processors on here. So I'll just choose, I'll go with four that you see here. Click next. I'm going to choose the default size hard drive, but you can change it if you'd like. And then choose finish. So that's going to be, an attended installation. So I'm going to power it on. And now the virtual machine is showing up that it is starting. I'm going to choose to capture the hardware that goes along with it, such as the mouse and keyboard. And they used to have this at the top. Now it's off to the right. I can just go ahead and click the X's and close those. You don't need those open. Click Next and Install Now. I may be prompted to put in a key for installation. It just depends on the operating system that you're installing. And we can see that it gives me the option for data center. And you want to choose the desktop experience unless you want just a command prompt to show up. And I'll click Next. I'll choose to accept the license. Choose a custom installation since this is the first time. It's not an upgrade. It's a new install. And now you can see the installation has begun. If you get any kind of error when this starts up saying VTX is not enabled, that means the virtualization is not enabled in the BIOS or the UEFI. So when you start up your computer, press the button that says for startup, press delete or F1 or F2, and then you'll get into the startup and then look under CPU and then make sure you enable virtualization or in some cases it says enable VTX. Either way, that will enable virtualization and then you'll be able to go ahead and do this installation. And the installation is now complete. One thing to keep in mind is the, that VirtualBox is a free product, not really 
designed to be used for production purposes, great for learning purposes, and uh, it's great for school, colleges, high school, things like that. But there's still a lot of bugs in it, so it's not the best idea to use it where you have to be in production and you're relying on it as a business tool. So that is how we install the operating system onto VirtualBox.